I'm often very late with this video, it's probably years behind actually, but I will soon be building it on it once I discover what that is, so please bear with me. Today I want to talk about a show that will seem completely out of place but is important, I believe in the general discussion about life. It's not often that we come across a series that goes into a clever and nuanced approach on suicide. We've had the likes of 10 Reasons Why, a show that completely butchered the concept of subtext, and to think one of my favorite songs came from that hell. We had all, most, some, and finally wanted nothing to do with it at all. But every now and then, something good comes along that is really worth a thought. One that answers as best as it can the great debate on whether suicide is right or wrong. And that is the Korean drama Death Game. I have never been one to judge where a series or movie comes from, and have taken time to watch from all sorts of countries. You never know where a spark of good ideas could come from. And for that reason, I won't go into detail for anyone who wants to watch it. Only spoiling the start and ending of the series, which in a funny way, I may be spoiling all of it, but there are still lots of fascinating moments in between. Death's game brings us face to face with death, while we ask ourselves the question of life, who has it better, who has it worse, and is a troubled life worth living? The main character, Choi, starts off the first episode with a lot of hope. He's off to an interview before he's even graduated, then disaster strikes. Amon runs into the streets, gets hit by a car, and dies. And Choi is that witness the whole thing which traumatizes him greatly, more so when the dying man clings to him desperate to say something but takes his last breath before he can. And I don't know about you, but I have never seen anyone die in front of me before. Seeing someone die must be one of those things that sometimes kills that innocent love of existence or builds more resistance. As is to be expected, Choi is out of it. He can't keep up and he loses his opportunity. His dreams vanish and he has to work menial jobs for more than seven years. The kinds of jobs that drive you to insanity and never really pull you back up. One day though, he gets a chance at an interview with the same company that he's actually very hopeful. A hope given to him by this guy. A very important character in the story, but I won't spoil it. A rare smile lights up the screen again, but disaster hits. All the money he'd saved up disappear in a flash. He's rejected from the job, thrown out of his apartment for overdue rent, and his last bit of hope, his girlfriend, appears to have started a relationship with someone else. She, unlike him, has become rather successful. He breaks up with her and finds himself standing on top of a building beyond the edge of despair. I found myself realizing that I couldn't blame him. The show cleverly introduces almost all the worst things that could happen to someone. No job, no money, no home, no friends, no future to speak of. A person who literally doesn't know where to place his next foot. That could drive most people to this decision. William Styron, in his book Darkness Visible, presents depression as the main cause. It can change how people see reality, and they can come to believe that there is completely no value to life. The writer suffered from depression as well, and nearly took his own life. Yet, a truth is that most people need only find some help to give them a new perspective of life that will completely turn them around. One of the reasons people often keep living is hope. I can learn something new, make friends, kick the habit. That hope we have that yes, tomorrow things will work out. But Trey doesn't get that encouragement. He doesn't step back and falls to his death right before his mother calls. At this point in the episode, I had no idea what was going to happen. I will tell you a strange thing about me. I really avoid trailers. I desperately do. I think it helps me keep an open mind when I start watching something that is really popular or praised. When I see good reviews or an interesting poster or a real clever synopsis, then I give the show a chance. Therefore, to be frank, I knew Death would be a character in the show, but I just didn't know to what extent. And it grabbed my interest instantly. Death tells Choi he's going to hell. <laughs> Death 
a near Shakespearean way of putting it. And as punishment, he has to face a series of 12 deaths, some destined to die within a day, a month, or within minutes. 대신, 그들에게 닥칠 죽음들을 피하게 된다면 그대로 살아갈 수도 있어. This offers a very clever dive into some fascinating character studies and also our own misconceptions about life and opportunities. As the audience, you're constantly thinking out loud about all the things he should have done right, all the things he should have remembered to avoid dying. But more than that, we also get to see how different people live such different lives and that there are many things that can bring people to the edge of despair. <laughs> It is from watching these different lives that I saw Nietzsche's philosophical argument on suicide as a truth. He points out that life's real beauty is not in its joys alone, not in the happy days and the laughter, but in the suffering, the trouble, the chaos, the absurdity of it all are crucial because through them we exercise our true potentials, we experience personal growth, self-actualization, an unbreakable positive mindset while some even achieve enlightenment. It's kind of like the story of the three piglets that had to build a stronger house to keep the wolf from blowing them away. Life may give you most, some, or all that you need, but often a single instant can leave you with nothing at all. Having the mental fortitude to face those moments is the purpose of struggle, but without struggle then there's nothing to learn. I often laugh when I remember that someone had to invent the spoon because they saw any other method as such a struggle. Then others complicated it and now we have more than 20 different kinds of spoons. That's a kind of beauty of life. Shakespeare's Hamlet says that the reason many people do not jump into death is because of that undiscovered country, the question of what lies ahead after death. So it is not the courage to live that keeps one living, but the fear to die, which defeats the whole purpose of self-discovery. Therefore, watching the show, I've come to see the undiscovered country in a different way, a way Nietzsche may support in his writings, that the undiscovered country is what future there might lie in the possibilities of life. Once someone has overcome the struggle, the chaos, the absurdity, even if it's just mental then the mind opens that person up to an undiscovered country full of all sorts of possibilities. Duryomethonunsengen진짜인생이아니다세상이알아주지않을까두려워뒤처질까두려워거절받을까두려워 나는 내 인생의 꽃도 펴보지 못한 채 그런데 죽고 나서야 알았다 삶이 기회였다는 사실을 there is one particular life that Choi throws away without a second thought. And yes, this is where I spoil the ending of the show. A small warning, if you'd like to watch the show fast and come back, it's okay. I'll give you roughly 10 hours. After facing numerous deaths and being traumatized by them, he believes even more strongly that it is better to die. When given this 11th life, Choi decides to die instantly and bolts into the streets, beginning the very cycle of misfortune that led to him standing on that ledge. The poetry of this moment was almost sinister. I wasn't expecting it. I personally thought he would have to live as the bully in prison. The act of death here is more painful. He sees his own possible future of failure while he destroys his very present. The truth of suicide often being that it leads to pain and misery for others. And now he wants nothing more than to simply die. One more life to go and he can put the misery of existence behind him. But a rather beautiful twist occurs that I absolutely love. I may be a very sentimental person, but I am often crying in moments like this. His last life is his mother's and it broke my heart. Seeing life through her eyes changes the entire meaning of their story altogether. It stops being a drama, but a rather beautiful message. His mother has lived a far harsher life than he has. Her husband dies, she's forced to scrape by, taking care of her son all on her own. The strange joys of life, as Nietzsche puts it. But the show points out in a wonderful way that she never gave up, giving her son the love that he needed to grow confident and determined for his own life, a rare gift that is a mother's true love, one that Choi realizes now that he greatly took for granted. And now she gets a call about her son. The sorrow of this moment is acted so well that I, it can't leave you untouched. And one sad day, she visits her son's shrine and tearfully says such powerful words. 
꼭 끝까지 살아줘 Choi, remembering the love, decides to live on, give her mother the full life she wanted for him. <laughs> now that we have seen the full view of someone's life, a life filled with so many disasters and losses, surely, if life is a misery, it shouldn't continue. But once again, I think it is exactly for that reason that it should. The wisdom, the intelligence, the boldness of character gathered through failure is far more powerful than what is gathered from success. I often watch stories of people who turn their lives around. That is willpower as Nietzsche describes it. And though I've been trying to read the short forms of his writings, I may not be clever enough to present it as best as possible, but I'll try. To fully embrace the possibilities of life is to see it all as one thing, both the good and the bad. That way, we develop the strength of character to accept disasters and move forward, to fall in love with fate, as it were. And fate is a cruel teacher. But it is the lessons from disappointment that make our willpower stronger. There are people with such strong willpower that they can add a three-hour exercise regime that starts today and goes unchanged for a hundred days. Why? Because he's learned through the struggles of life or forced himself to learn by creating personal struggles and goals for himself. And often, some of the most determined people were once the weakest people before they got the courage to change because they had to change. This should give us a powerful lesson by ending the story with her, and it encourages us to live for the undiscovered lands of tomorrow. Thanks for listening to me rumble on and on about life and living, but it is dear to me. Recently, I lost someone. It's not from her taking her own life, but an illness. And it hit me hard and made me realize that I should keep living strong for those who couldn't because fate was much harsher on them. That makes her life a gift to those who keep on living, if they can take her courage. And I guess that's why we need good stories on top of real stories to see other perspectives, aspects of life, and talk about new ideas so that we can gain strength and willpower from the stories of others. So be strong out there. Wake up tomorrow with new hope. I promise I'll focus my videos on one niche soon. But thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.